Sue Opper decides to address the court about jerk off Daryl Brooks competency and I was kind of concerned as to where this was going at first but let's see what happens I did want to address a topic that's maybe not been raised in the courtroom um, but has been raised in the in the public and it seems to kind of go hand in hand with the events of this morning and that is the mental competency of Mr. Daryl Brooks to proceed to trial. The court is well aware that the district attorney has an obligation and a duty to raise any concerns as to the competency of any defendant to proceed to trial. Um, any counsel representing Mr. Brooks would have that same obligation and the court itself uh, if had if it had a concern as to the competency of any defendant to proceed can request an evaluation that's pursuant to 971.14 of the Wisconsin statutes at no time has anyone involved in this case had a competency concern and I say that based on the fact that Mr. Brooks has made multiple court appearances most of them before your honor but at least initially he appeared uh, before two court or uh, yes two court commissioners um, he's had counsel representing him up until last week on this case and you made a record with attorney Perry previously as to Mr. Brooks ability to understand what's going on and his ability to participate in his own defense you made a thorough record last week when you went through his uh, waiver of right to an attorney and his absolute desire that he expressed multiple times to represent himself i would also add to his coherence he is intelligent he knows the issues in the courtroom he discusses what happened in court that day with these um, individuals he's speaking to i am thoroughly convinced your honor that mr brooks is 100 percent competent to proceed to trial that his mental capacity is not reduced in any fashion. Anybody that thinks otherwise has no involvement with this case. I would reference the court to today's filing, which Mr. Brooks provided. It is extremely well written. His handwriting is immaculate. It's perfect. The punctuation, the grammar is 100% accurate. He uh, drafted this himself in his jail cell last night, I presume. Maybe it was this morning. Um, he has continued with the same objections that he has been making repeatedly in this case. So he clearly understands the issues. He understands the defense that he wants to pursue. He undertook the effort to have this form notarized by uh, a jail uh, employee so that it is a signed and sworn affidavit. Absolutely no concerns on the part of the state of Wisconsin that Mr. Brooks has any deficiency in his competency. We are 100% convinced that these actions of Mr. Brooks are deliberate and intentional and they have escalated and the court has seen this since August 25th or so as the motions were decided by the court, most of them uh, to his detriment, his behavior became more and more difficult in the courtroom. It started out less aggressive with him sleeping and asking to be able to leave the courtroom. Then we had a toothache. Then we had um, a situation where he didn't want to come to court, was refusing to come to court. The record will be clear, Your Honor, that each time, and the Sheriff's Department has done an absolutely fantastic job dealing with Mr. Brooks fairly, professionally, respectfully at all times. We concur 100% with the record you just made as to what happened after the recess at about 842 this morning as to Mr. Brooks' conduct. These are deliberate actions on his part as we get closer and closer and closer to actually presenting this case to a jury that he is attempting to derail these proceedings and avoid the inevitable.
And I want to make that record. I tell this court as an officer of the court, we have zero concerns as to the mental competency of Daryl Brooks to proceed. And we have had many, many dealings with him on the record and off the record that I base that on. I also wanted to add one other comment as to the court's record as to the need to proceed with this trial. We concur 100%. We would also know it's not just a matter of resources. It's the need to proceed to justice. It's the need to get justice for the crime victims who have patiently attended every one of these hearings. They have a constitutional right to trial. They have a constitutional right to a speedy disposition of this case. And that doesn't mean hasty, that doesn't mean reckless, it means efficient administration of justice. And this court has provided that to the crime victims. And, and we think that's another reason that Mr. Brooks' antics, which is all they are, clearly speak for themselves. This is not his inability to understand what's going on by any stretch. There's a lot of things wrong with Jackass Brooks, but I don't think he's mentally incompetent at all. He tries to play the part. He tries to make it look that way. And he is a little bit slow in the brain. Like his, uh, like, he honestly thought he was going to be able to win this case, and that's what I mean by slow in the brain. He was in such denial, and I believe he's in prison trying to get ready for an appeal that even if they grant him that appeal, he's going to lose that also. And it's just ridiculous what he's done in this case, not just his actions before the actual crime of driving down the parade, parade route, but during that and after that and while in court, he just has no, what was that that Sue Opera said a while ago? Utter, he has utter disregard for human life except his own life and his kid's life. That's the only thing I think that he cares about as far as if they're dead or alive. He doesn't care about the women he's knocked up. I don't believe he cares about what happens to his mom or his grandma or his grandpa. He obviously doesn't give a crap about his nephew because his nephew could have been killed by Daryl shooting that gun off in his nephew's direction on purpose. It's just ridiculous. And then the nephew, the Milwaukee courts couldn't even contact him in regards to the case of Daryl shooting at him. And so what they gave him, Daryl, two extra years, which really doesn't mean nothing because he's locked up for his natural life, but he should get time for whatever crime he's done. I don't care how much time he already has to serve. So I really hope that Erica will show up. I know that he's going to trial with that, and he's doing that because that's the way he gets to see her. That's the only way he gets to see her is in court. And I hope to God he doesn't try to intimidate her even more so that she doesn't testify. Because him running her over before November 21st of 2021, he doesn't care about her. He never has. And it's obvious. Thank you, Attorney Opper, and I do appreciate you uh, raising that with the court um, because I share uh, your observations that you've just noted on the record. I would adopt them fully uh, as if they were my own and make them part of the findings that I've already made on the record. Um, obviously, I, I personally haven't listened to the jail phone calls that you uh, referenced, but I do uh, take your statements as an officer of the court. I look 
forward to further reviewing them if need be, changing any uh, conclusions that I've reached here today, and I would require you to file that um, exhibit uh, so that um, that can be part of the record um, as well. I would also add to what you have just stated, this court has read through not one, not two, not three, but four evaluations related to the special plea that was withdrawn. And those are very recent evaluations where the examiners um, met face-to-face -face in the jail or in an appropriate visitation room with Mr. Brooks, either in July or August of this year. And every single one of those individuals did a mental status exam that's noted in their reports. Frankly, the behavior that we're starting to see here is no different than some of the behavior that was noted by those examiners as well. That it, this behavior is frankly more in line with someone who's defiant, deliberate, and in line with the conclusions related to whether he suffers from a mental disease or defect that would qualify for a special plea. I've not gone into much detail and I won't. Those documents are part of the record, but it's very clear to this court that everything that he has done uh, as outlined by the state and as made evident on the record uh, of these proceedings, that it is the sole intent of Mr. Brooks to make a mockery of this process. And I've stated, and I'll state it again, I'm not gonna tolerate it, but there is, uh, I believe this trial needs to continue should continue not only for Mr. Brooks as the accused, who also has the right to a speedy disposition, he hasn't exercised it, the victims have a right to a speedy disposition, and uh, it's important for the justice system to go forward with this proceeding. We are at the stage where we are at with Mr. Brooks muted in another courtroom because of his defiant actions. No one else. I appreciate everyone's patience as the court goes through these things, frankly, gives Mr. Brooks time after time after time to conform his conduct to the clear expectations, but he just simply flat out refuses to do so. That's exactly right. He flat out refuses to do so. He says, oh, nobody can tell me what to do. I'm an adult. You can ask, but I won't let anybody tell me what to do. I want to know what the guards are telling him, you know, how they and what they are telling him to do. And also the other inmates at the correctional, what's it, at the uh, correctional facility that he is located. I would love to know.